Here in my hands, I'm holding the record with which a single player could win the most titles worldwide. Jimmy Connors won 109 tournaments throughout his career, more than Roger Federer and any other player in the world. This record, a Wilson T2000. This record, with a striking appearance and a very extraordinary string pattern, also heralded the end of the wooden record era. Why was it like that? And how was the record strung with the technology of a stringing machine from the 70s? I'm gonna show you all of that in this video. In 1953, René Lacoste, one of the four musketeers with Jean Bourdra, Jacques Prignon and Henri Cochet, those French tennis stars who dominated the game in the late 1920s and early 1930s, came up with a novel blueprint for a metal tennis record. I'm sure that the roots of Lacoste's ideas were initially triggered by the first metal records that appeared on the market in the 20s. It took him another eight years to finalize the concept. In 1961, Lacoste unveiled and patented the first tabular steel tennis racket in their history. At that time, wooden rackets were the norm. The new version strings were attached to the frame by a series of wires, which wrapped around the racket head. The steel tube racket was stiffer and imparted a greater force to the ball during a stroke. From 1961, Lacoste tried to build up his cells and distribution channels. But I hope the French visitors of this video won't kick me for that. It was never easy for a French business to prevail. Lacoste was a brand rather made for the luxury sector than for the general market. As a result, he was only moderately successful with his new product. Of course, this wasn't hidden from the competitors. It was common knowledge at the time that the racket was offered to Spalding and Dunlop, but was turned down. And so, also William B. Holmes, who was the fourth president of Wilson Sporting Goods, became aware of Lacoste steel construction. Holmes contacted Lacoste, and then, eventually in 1965, it was a beautiful summer evening, one of the most incisive business meetings in tennis history took place at a nice restaurant under the Eiffel Tower. The crucial point, Lacoste wanted Wilson to produce the record, but under license, with his name and the alligator trademark to appear on the record. Holmes, who was a small businessman with a very fine sense of historical and revolutionary opportunity, insisted on a Wilson identified product exclusively. One can speculate about what was going on that night. Holmes had his return flight to the US the other day. Lacoste paid the manager of the restaurant, which usually closed at midnight at the time, a substantial tip so that the two could continue to negotiate until dawn. Nothing is known about how exactly Holmes convinced Lacoste to waive his request, but it should be clear that both left the place with a contract in their pocket that sent the champagne corks popping at their both homes. And then everything went very quickly. Slight cosmetic changes as well as refinements in the metal used for the string suspension were worked out by the Wilson engineers. Sales and marketing strategies were developed. Naming the record, it was decided to go the same route as 10 years earlier with the A2000 baseball glove. Thus, the T2000 name was assigned. Introduced in 1967, players were waiting 7 to 12 weeks for delivery. Imagine this today. Players wouldn't even accept a delivery time of more than a day, and they would already change the supplier. It was supposed to break all previous sales records in the near future. Wilson eventually signed a contract with Jimmy Connors, who would play the Steely, as it was sometimes called, for 18 years. He was so tied to his Steely that he continued to play with the record even after production stopped and bought up every T2000 that was still available. It was Connors' trademark, but also the beginning of the end for the wooden record era. After its release back in 1967, within four months, more than two dozen different models of competitors' metal records appeared on the market. Wilson, worldwide leader in marketing top-grade wooden records, had broken the barrier. And within 18 years, wooden record would all but disappear from the scene. We have learned quite a lot about the T2000 of Wilson Sporting Goods. We have learned about the very first steel rackets beginning from the 20s, 1920s. We have heard about the Lacoste steel racket, which Lacoste, René Lacoste, distributed from 1961. And the Wilson T2000 produced, distributed 
from 1967. This racket was manufactured in quite some executions. We see a nice stock in here of the T2000, 3000 and T4000. There were also 5 and 6000 which were produced in the time of that racket. It's very easy talking about it. It's another stage of complexity to put the strings on it. Yeah? And I haven't done it for 30 years and uh, I'm a little bit nervous doing that. And uh, I will grab some racket from here. This one is a gift that goes to my very dear friend, Dr. Marcus Manuel. Marcus, have fun with it. I hope it will still look like a tennis racket after finishing this exercise. Mr. Wilson, T2000. You want to know more about the history of tennis and its records? Follow and like our videos and channel and see you next time. And at that time, <laughs> home sets a place with a pocket. You want to know more about tennis and the history? You want to know more about tennis and the history? You want to know more about the history of tennis and its records? Follow and like our video. You want to know more about the history of tennis and its records? Follow and like our videos and channel, and see you next time.